Ladies and gentlemen, now today we've had the official release of Variant 5 Blood and Venom, and I think this is probably one of my favourite, if not my favourite variants so far, just because there are so many different ways to approach it, and even 4-star champions are viable solutions to all of the bosses, at least in terms of the completion. But also on top of that as well, man, the rewards are just so much better in comparison to every other variant as well. Usually in all four variants, you need to do 100% to get the rank 5 gem however this one just doing the easy path completion you can get another rank 5 champions that's really really good uh, also there are 5,000 six star hero crystal shards uh, 2,000 for the um uh, what is it full completion and also 1000 per chapter and also loads of generic rank up gems as well so yeah this variant it just has mega rewards in comparison to the other four and i would say it is kind of in the top three easiest uh but it depends on your roster as to which variant is the easiest one to deal with however we're going to dive in today talk about the easiest paths best champions um and also everything that you need to know to have a pretty good time now before we get into talking about some of the easiest paths let's quickly cover some of the restrictions and requirements and we need to give some mad love to cat murdoch art she put together this amazing infographic which basically shows you at a glance all of the characters that you can bring into this variant and again there's no star restriction so even four star characters will work uh, providing you are a skilled player uh, so do keep that in mind as well but essentially there's three different categories of character so you got spider verse heroes you got mystic champions and also Symbio. Now, when it comes to the Spider-Verse heroes, really like Stark and Spider-Man, Stealth Suit Spider-Man, and Spider-Gwen, all doing some, um, uh, very, very solid work if you've got them ranked up. Uh, classic Spider-Man, Miles, and also Symbio. Uh, not really as jazzy. Like, Symbio, you know, he does pack a fair punch as well. But if you have skills, you know, on various nodes and combinations, uh, all of these characters can be viable. And when it comes to Symbio characters, Venom is crazy for so much stuff. Uh, also, Symbio Supreme, really, really good. Uh, Venom the Duck is very cheesy, especially for the very first quest as well, because you've got, like, massive massive armor nodes. Uh, Carnage can be alright in some scenarios, but yeah, Agent Venom, Venom Paul, uh, not really that exciting. And then when it comes to Mystic Champions, again, a massive pull there. If you have a look at the tier list, really, um, uh, any character that's like god tier or above is going to have some really solid uses throughout uh but dr doom symbiote supreme uh long shot and magic and probably clairvoyant as well really really do shine in this quest uh but also i've heard great things about dr voodoo morning star i uh, played a bit of mojo as well but when it comes to the mystic class there's actually just so many options as well sasquatch man are really really good uh for certain fights and scenarios so yeah when it comes to the mystics there are so many really really crazy characters uh but anyway let's jump into uh chapter one quest number one and start having a look at some of the easiest paths now you've got a little bit of a choice as to um uh, what you'd like to tackle here it's probably like left hand side that you want to go for because if you go for right hand side then you've got fully debuffed immune and also bane as well and some fairly annoying opponents to fight like buffed up hulkbuster but if you go left hand side you've got 90 percent armor and strike back so if you play this node uh, very carefully with venom the duck like he's just going to absolutely explode it i've already seen like so many venom the duck cheeses if you do go far left hand side however if you do Fully commit to that path as well. You got to deal with Iron Man Infinity War and also Havoc. Um, and Iron Man Infinity War, a bit more annoying on the armor and strike back node. However, Havoc, it kind of works if you play around this fight carefully in your favor. Because ideally with Havoc, you constantly want to push him to a special two. So if you can use the... Um, uh, the strike back nodes kind of keep on fueling him up there um, and keep on making him dump his special too um, then yeah it's just a really really good time but again in any of the quests you can bring in any of the three tags of champion so even in this one you can bring in like mystic champions or symbiote ones uh, so there are a lot of options another option is you can go for the middle if you want uh, there's like double power gain enhanced special one special one bias not really too bad in the first section some pretty easy opponents however once you get to the next section you do have like what is it mojo mysterio magneto so that is going to be a little bit more difficult in comparison and then we've got the captain marvel boss who has a 90 percent armor node so you can massively cheese this fight if you do bring in um 
Uh, what is it, Ven in the Dark? Because, yeah, he's just going to absolutely explode her with his toxic armor. Um, but she's a mighty charge node. She's fully immune to debuffs. So in this fight, you've just got to essentially, like, bait out heavy attacks um, or bait out special one. Or if you've brought in a Spider-Verse hero, what you can do is you can get a dex on the special attack. I think it's, like, three times. And then you get an unblockable for 10 seconds. So, yeah, you can use that to your advantage. But in all honesty, man, like, none of the global nodes throughout this entire quest are really needed but just you know keep in mind that they are there and chapter one does have the great power and great responsibility um however yeah i just didn't find it like too useful it's it's okay for some scenarios but in all honesty man that captain marvel fight is not really um uh, too much of a problem in all fairness uh, just bait out heavy attacks bait out special one you can literally do it with any character there and then moving into uh, quest number two so quest number two you actually have a pretty easy path apart aside from like one particular character so like you got a breakthrough path but you've also got armor break immunity so a breakthrough like anything above 25 hits you just start hitting like an absolute truck so it's very easy to get through and Iceman really is the only problematic defender uh, if if you don't bring in a cold snap counter so if you don't have like sasquatch or mephisto um just bring in somebody with like a really high health pool like venom or venom the duck uh, or some character like ghost rider or um uh, Dr. Voodoo that has regeneration. I think Sorcerer Supreme also has really high energy resistance as well. So there are a few ways to get through that Iceman. But in all honesty, if you can do that path, man, it's by far the easiest one out of all of them. And then you've got the Gamora boss who is uh, a little bit of a joke. She's just very easy as long as you don't get clipped by those special attacks. So she has the Oscillate node. She's also immune to stun. Um, and she also has Power Shield as well. So your special attacks are going to hit like a friggin' truck, man. Man. I used a 5 star rank 3 Sasquatch for this fight uh, so again if you are struggling turn to the, the 4 star roster um, for utility and various options but yeah Sasquatch is um uh, what is it really really good for the far left hand side and also that Gamora boss but it's just a uh, stun immune uh, unblockable special Gamora and your uh, special attacks are going to hit really really hard so power shield is a bit more of a benefit than a detriment in a lot of scenarios so yeah the first two bosses in comparison to the variant standard of bosses just really really straightforward um, but the next two as well are not too bad to deal with it's really only the final two that start to present a um uh, a couple of problems and stuff you need to worry about a little bit more. Now, in quest number three, I think there are like three paths that are pretty easy. I went for this one here. Uh, so basically, the opponent gets to the special one a little bit quicker, but above that, barely gains any power from kind of hitting into the opponent. So you've got like two of these Adaptoids and also Cyclops, just really straightforward fights there. The only difficulty is Vision Arcus, but if you've got a good Nullify character, then yeah, it just makes this an absolute walk in the park um but yeah just gets to a special one a little bit quicker it's very easy to kind of bait out and get in a good rotation there i think i just demolished that entire lane with mojo um, but also going straight ahead isn't a, a bad option either uh there's like double debuff duration on you which doesn't really matter like too much i think in the majority of these fights in all fairness uh there is also power alternator so every 15 seconds if you have more power than the defender uh basically your power is going to um uh, swap around so, so for this if you always have less power than the defender then it really isn't too much of a problem there but again domino is a little bit of a pain to deal with and then left hand side this one's just going to be a bit annoying but quite easy as well uh so basically the defender is very often going to gain fury um and if you nullify one of the defender's buffs you get power lock for two and a bit seconds but also if any buff is active then it reduces your crit chance by 50 percent so yeah it's just like a little bit of an annoying combo there but it's not a difficult combo by any standard. And a lot of the fights, you know, there's no really problematic champions like Silver Surfer. Heimdall Crossbones are a little bit annoying, but not really the worst characters in the game to fight. Uh, and then we've got Scarlet Witch boss. And this boss is essentially, you just got to avoid like lots of special attacks. So she's got double power gain. But also, as I found out, uh, you can't power drain her, power steal or power burn. So you just need to constantly dodge the special attacks. The kind of problem in this fight, um, 
uh, really comes from just the fun interactive poison because all of her debuffs that she applies to you last 100% longer so they got double duration so double duration on the heal block double duration on the poison so that's going to get you down gradually um, but yeah if you've got like a, a couple of good damage characters you can just get through this without using any revives uh, but worst case scenario you can just use revives to get her down uh, or use a poison immune champion as well that could work uh, but poison immune isn't necessarily needed again you can do her without poison immune just as long as you've got a couple of hard hitting characters in your team um, so yeah chapter 2 quest number 1 not too bad at all and then we've got uh, what is it quest number 4 overall but um uh, 2.2 here so again this is that the mystic portion and the global node that was active in the previous one is arcane torrent so for each buff on the defender mystic attackers gain additional ability accuracy uh, attack bleed debuff duration armor break debuff duration and also power rate as well now for this quest there's just a really easy lane in terms of the nodes if you go over here you've got arc overload you got pessimist optimist arc overload really isn't that scary to deal with there uh uh, the most problematic fight is maybe Mr. Sinister and Squirrel Girl. She caught me uh, with her special two when I was fighting against her, so she can be a little bit annoying as well. But in all honesty, man, probably one of the easiest paths in terms of the actual moves to deal with there. Uh, so if you go up there, you'll get to the Storm Boss. And the Storm Boss, ideally if you have Symbiote Supreme here, uh, really, really good. But also like Venom, Carnage, any character that can bleed can put in a really solid dent quite quickly. So she has Arc Overload, she's got Adaptive. She also has Aspect of Evolution, so the longer this fight goes on, the less damage she's going to take, the more crit resistance she'll have, the more power gain, and a lot of characters like... Um uh, what is it carnage and venom uh rely on the crits in order to apply their bleed so that's why symbiote supreme i think is the ideal character to bring to this one but she does have bleed vulnerability so if you get a bleed on her man you're hitting her like a friggin truck so that's really really nice there but really like any good bleed character uh might take like two bleed characters in, or in order to get her down but in all honesty again she's just a really really straightforward boss in comparison to a lot of other stuff but one thing you might want to be aware of if you're playing a uh, symbiote supreme is the burden of might node so just make sure you don't trigger dexterity and dash back just make sure you like block special attacks or like safely outrange them without triggering dex uh, in order to get to that special three um but yeah pretty straightforward fight again the first four bosses at least in my opinion are um uh, for variant level challenge just all very easy to deal with but the last two have uh you know slightly more requirements but on absolute hell in comparison to some of the most like uh nasty and notorious variant bosses out there now for the lane here you've got some options you could go left hand side there is a flux dispersal limber node here uh so this is the one where you attack in and every attack deals like five percent less damage but if you use a heavy attack you can reset that so that's like not a bad one to go for uh, all of the opponents as well on that one are pretty straightforward pretty easy to deal with however for testing i wanted to try out the um uh, what is it the life transfer psychic thorns and the defenders on this one are definitely like a little bit harder because you got black widow you got dormami you got emma frost blade and also guillotine however the combination of these nodes like life transfer is so op so even if you do mess up against any of these defenders you just throw in a combo if you've got some hard hitting characters you're just going to heal up to full so yeah it's kind of up to you um what you want to go for here but that's not a bad lane to kind of tackle but left hand side as well uh you know it's pretty straightforward to deal with you definitely don't want to go for that spider-man lane that was going to be really really annoying and this lane over here with a backup recovery and redouble determination uh, it could be an option for some rosters um but yeah a bit of a pain if you've got a lot of characters that do rely on um uh, debuffs but i can see like some rosters going for that one uh but yeah i think just avoid the evasion lane and you should be good uh and then we have the uh, the symbiote spider-man final boss who's boss number five overall so he has this node the best defense so he gains plus 60 percent evade and auto block ability accuracy and if you trigger his evade or auto block he gains 30 percent of a bar of power he also has 50 percent more power gain kinetic transference and limber so ideally here you want a very strong power control champion or an evade counter like uh, venom or stealth suit spider-man in order to um 
uh, just completely shut his evade down. So yeah, those are the two kind of category of character that you are after. And if you have a solid power control like Doom or Magic, uh, then yeah, this fight is just GG. If you can ignore his evade with Venom or Spider-Man, the fight's just GG. Uh, but worst case scenario with this one, you can just unit man it, just nuke in with your hardest hitting champions, and he will eventually die. Um, so yeah, that is also a potential option there when it comes to dealing with that symbiote Spider-Man boss. And then after that, we move on to the very final quest where we have a super stacked up 500,000 hit point Venom as the very final boss. Now, having a look at the lanes here, I went and tried out this uh, Aggression Fury, Aggression Regeneration, also Mystic Ward lane. This one, the quality of defenders is really easy to deal with. Uh, you've got like some slightly problematic characters like uh, War Machine, uh, Black Panther, Agent Venom can trip some people up, but it really isn't too bad if you can play aggressively. That one's pretty straightforward, but I also see a lot of people going... Um, uh, just straight down the middle because if you go down the middle you've just got buff duration and also outlast as well so in all fairness man it's not really like any nodes that you need to worry about the problem down the middle is that you've got to fight both hyperion and also the invisible woman as well and i know for some people those two opponents can be tricky so yeah i'd probably pick between like those two lanes but also for some people who can't play aggressively enough aggression regeneration can be a bit of a problem um i would say if you want to guarantee that you can just like units your way through just go straight down the middle because then you don't need to deal with aggression regeneration um but yeah it's kind of up to you whatever you feel comfortable with but yeah just try out both of the paths and see which one is your cup of tea and kind of best suited for your roster uh but both of those two paths at least in my opinion really aren't too bad to deal with and then we arrive at the final venom boss now in terms of the nodes and what you got to deal with this fight is actually really straightforward on paper however being like a half a million health venom he's a bit intimidating a bit menacing and he definitely clapped me a few times when I was fighting him earlier. So he's got Enhanced Unblockable Special 2 and he also has Double Power Gain. So this man is going to be throwing a lot of special attacks and Venom is one of those characters that if you're not leaving yourself too open, uh, he can really easily back you into the corner. So ideally, if you bring in a strong power control champion here, somebody like Doctor Doom or Magic going to work out really, really well. I imagine Doctor Voodoo would work out half decently. However, I don't know how exactly he interacts with the um uh, what is it mystic ward node because enemy nullify effects do have a 95 percent chance to fail um so yeah you just really need a, a good power control champion or to bait out a lot of special attacks on venom so if you're very good at evading the special two man you're gonna love this fight i found it best just uh you know get him into the corner um, and play very aggressively and as soon as he has the special two just dash back as much as i could and very often i could just outrange the special two so it worked out really nicely. I think I finished off the final 40% of this fight with my 6-star Venom. Uh, so yeah, you don't necessarily need a power control character. But in the in the end, like he's got no recovery. He's got no regeneration. So you can just like units man this down. And he will eventually... Um, uh, drop and in comparison to other final bosses yeah he really just isn't too much of a problem um so yeah once you got that venom down man that is what is it five thousand six star shards in the bag another rank five character loads of gold as well uh so overall i think variant five especially like the difficulty versus reward is the best variant like for the difficulty of these fights and how manageable they are for all sorts of rosters and characters and to have like a rank five champion given to you just for the completion of it man is top notch i really really like that uh but yeah ladies and gentlemen let me know who you use for some of the various bosses and encounters in the comments section below and if you have any really really good suggestions again please do leave them uh but aside from that if you did enjoy today's guide on how to easily complete variant 5 blood and venom uh please do smash that like button that'd be greatly appreciated take care i hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day